And the new school really gives you the opportunity to figure out what you want to do and how what you want to do can affect change throughout not just your personal life, but the world. I really am in this artistic community of people who are working to really change the world through their practice and to be socially engaged in their projects. I thought that I was just built to work for someone else, which is great, but coming to the new school gave me the confidence to leave knowing that I do have what it takes to be my own boss. I'm studying the same theory that Mozart studied, but at the same time I get to do productions um, that are new and edgy and really different from <laughs> what I do in my coursework. I'm not just working in film, I'm working in, in video games and I'm working in VR. Uh, and it's combining these things that I love about film, but it's allowing me to explore narrative that actually kind of matters to me. The theoretical and the scholarly is always connected to the practical component of actually um, making a difference. So being here at the new school has really made me more aware of what and why I do something, musically and as a person. I want to use these tools to be able to bridge policy and design in a way that no one has attempted to in my country. The New School is a place to explore who you are, why you are, and like what you want to be. Putting a theory into motion, I think, is what the New School offers. It tells you to do. It's like, don't, don't sit around and like just read this go out and explore. The type of student who would do so well in the new school is the kind that looks at something and says, why does it have to be this way? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Parsons School of Design at the new school. My name is Simone Veradian, and I'm the Director of Graduate Admission at Parsons. And on behalf of the admission office, I would like to welcome you to campus and congratulate you on your offer of admission. We, uh, you've all been invited to become members of an elite class of artists, designers, scholars, creative thinkers ready to take on the world. The New School is a special place, and as you saw from the video, we have a unique but complementary blend of disciplines and interests. The unique composition is rooted in our distinctive history. One of the things that initially drew me to working at Parsons in the New School was this rich history and how it translated to the vibrancy and community that we have today. As our name would forecast, the New School remains one of the most progressive institutions of higher learning in the world. Over the past century, we grew to include several schools, some like Parsons School of Design and Manus Conservatory of Music began independently predating the New School itself. Others like our Liberal Arts College founded by Eugene Lang in 1985 are one of the more new schools to join the university. Graduate divisions such as the New School for Social Research and the Schools of Public Engagement and the Milano School of International Affairs, Management and Urban Studies, programs in creative writing and TESOL offer graduate coursework for you to take as electives. This year, Parsons received more graduate applicants than ever before. This was an increase not only in volume, but also in quality. The insights you articulated in your personal statements, the talents you demonstrated in your portfolios and writing samples, and the positive impact you've made within your communities more than impressed us. We are enormously proud to consider you the newest members of our community. Uh, I'd like to take a moment on the topic of community to find out who we have in the room today. Um, so by a show of hands, um, how many of you are, uh, are New Yorkers from the New York metropolitan area? Okay. And how many of you maybe traveled from another state today? Wow, all right. Probably trains, planes, and automobiles. Um, and any came from another country? Wow, that's more than you might expect. Can you uh, uh, not be bashful and shout it out? Tell us where you came from today. Wow, so that, I heard um, Iceland, I heard London, I heard Canada. Wow, how terrific. Well, this is a wonderful, uh, quick representation of the geographic diversity of the students who enroll here. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for being brave and shouting that out. 
So to give you some figures that might be helpful for you as you um, conceptualize your time here, um, we are a comprehensive university of over 10,000 students um, coming from all 50 states and 116 different countries. Parsons on its own has about 5,000 students um, across both undergraduate and graduate programs. And this year we anticipate an incoming graduate student population of around 500 students from 19 different programs. About 50% of our student body comes from outside of the United States. So we're really pleased to have such a global population of students um, in our classrooms. The school now known worldwide as Parsons School of Design was first opened in 1896 as the Chase School by a leading group of progressives who seceded from the Art Students League of New York in search of more individualistic expression under the eventual leadership of Frank Parsons, the school then created groundbreaking programs linking art and design with industry. In 1970, Parsons joined the new school, where today we continue our legacy of innovation in design practice, theory, and collaboration. Here to tell you more about the extraordinary school is our executive dean, Joel Towers. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all of you uh, on your admissions and to all of you who will be uh, watching this either online, later. Um, congratulations to you as well. It's uh, a great, great pleasure to be here this morning. It's beautiful outside and um, beautiful inside as well. And I have the opportunity to talk to you today about a few things that are really comprehensive about Parsons. Um, in a little bit, you'll get a chance to hear from faculty and leadership in the various different schools at Parsons, but I really wanted to start and frame for you the bigger picture, if I could, about why design is so important um, and why it matters to be studying it now here at Parsons and in the New School. And I just want to start with a, a notion for you. Um, you know, the New School is turning 100 years old. Uh, you probably see the the signs all around the university on our 100th anniversary for the new school. Parsons is almost 125, as Simone was just saying. But when John Dewey and his colleagues started the new school, they put forward a really radical proposition. And it's quite simple, actually. The radical proposition is that education should be for the time in which you live focused on the problems that society faces in that time. And it is for that reason, in my opinion, that design education broadly, um, as we construe it here at, at Parsons and at the university, which is to say an education about creativity and innovation, uh, an education that spans the fields of art and design and business and strategy and foresight, these areas are so important to address the kinds of intersectional challenges that we face today that they are essentially what Dewey would have been anticipating were he to be here starting this university 100 years later today. And so design is at the very core of addressing the challenges that the world faces today. And it's why the education matters so much um, in this time, and it's why it matters that we do it here, because of the interdisciplinarity, the hybridity, the transdisciplinarity that characterizes this place. So it's how we bring art and design and business together, and it's how we do it within this university that makes it so important and so deeply relevant to our times. I need mention only a few of the kind of intersectional challenges that we face, things like climate change uh, and environmental issues broadly, issues around data um, and communications, questions um, that are driven by uh, all sorts of intersectional urban challenges. These are not solved alone by design, but they are addressed critically through the practices that you engage with here as a student and through the work of our faculty and their research. So that's why it matters that you're here, and I'm going to spend my few minutes just talking broadly about um, what brings these things together and what makes it possible for the course of study here at Parsons. And I'm going to do that by focusing on four areas. Um, our faculty, the structure of our curriculum, the research that goes on here, and of course the facilities that underlie and support all of those activities. Uh, later, as I said, you'll have a chance to speak to the program leadership 
um, who will be more specific in terms of the disciplinary focus that you're here to engage in. I want to focus on the cross-disciplinary piece of that, the broader picture. Um, as I mentioned, faculty are critical to the work that we do here. In fact, nothing would be possible if it wasn't for the extraordinary um, depth of research, creative practice, and scholarship that our faculty bring to this work. Um, I joined this faculty 15 years ago, and it has been and continues to be one of the truly most rewarding experiences of my professional career. I'm an architect as, a, as background um, and have practiced for many, many years and have also been engaged in, in academic um, and curricular work uh, since I've been here. And working with this community of faculty, both from professionals who are here um, on a part-time basis and are coming from the cutting edge of practice, uh, to scholars and, and researchers and full-time faculty who are here looking at the overall arch of the experience of what it means to be a student at Parsons and the way that they work together. In the course of the last year alone, our faculty have produced 80 different uh, publications um, in just one, in this one last year. Uh, we have Pulitzer Prize winners here on faculty. We have AIGA medalists. We've got um, uh, MacArthur Grant Award winners, National Design um, uh, uh, medalists uh, last year, or this current year, excuse me, Nora Krug, one of our faculty in illustration, um, received a National Book Critics Prize for a book that you may have seen because it's everywhere called Belonging. Um, the subtitle is A German Reckons with History and Home. Uh, you also might have seen Dave Carroll on the, on the news because he's on the news a lot these days. Um, Dave is a graduate of our MFA in transdisciplinary de uh, in design and technology where he is also a full-time faculty member, but you would have seen Dave because of the work he's been doing around Cambridge Analytica, a company that he sued in order to get his own files from the 2016 election back and um, was uh, able to do that and is playing a very significant role in building out true data transparency and protection around the globe. Uh, and this is just a small sample of what's going on here um, among our faculty. Those faculty have created as I said, a truly transdisciplinary approach to curriculum. What you see here are the 19 different programs that Simone was referencing. Uh, among our graduate degrees, uh, as uh, Simone said, it's a portion of what we are at Parsons. There are about 1,000 students at Parsons in graduate programs across these 19 different degrees. Um, and uh, over the course of the last decade or so, we have grown some of these to be specifically focused on the kinds of challenges I was mentioning before. And at the same time, we have threaded through our existing programs this notion of relevance and transdisciplinarity. And so while they are deep disciplinary dives, they also speak to a broader set of challenges that anyone gets involved with um, as you approach uh, a complicated and intersectional world. Collaboration is key in that world, and we try to teach that and model that among our programs. We've also introduced, just in this most recent year, a series of nine credit graduate minors. Uh, the intention there is to very explicitly open up the curriculum for students to be able to then take advantage of other parts of the university, uh, to go work outside of your primary field and gain exposure through new ideas and alternative um, modes of research and practice. So for example, um, you can be working uh, in, a, in a particular discipline such as design studies or capitalism studies in those minors, um, or you could be investigating uh, emerging interdisciplinary issue, issues such as migration and service design, or develop professional capabilities in areas like entrepreneurship or digital storytelling. And the idea here again is to enrich and expand your focused disciplinary work here among the graduate programs. So how do we do this work here? Part of it was structural, part of it is um, curricular, as I mentioned. The structural piece of what we do is um, uh, largely based on how we organize the school. So we grouped our programs into clusters that we refer to as schools. Um, and we, we call them that in part because of the intersection among the various different degree programs that exist within those schools. So there's a kind of affinity uh, within the degree programs that sit within a school, and they create what we call a community of practice. And of course, the, uh, that kind of uh, relationship um, is a very rich and dynamic one, but it is also the basis upon which then 
the broader cross-disciplinary or transdisciplinary work that happens at the university is possible to go from school to school or from uh, Parsons as a college to one of the other colleges at the university, and I'll talk about that in a moment. This interdisciplinarity, I think, is critical in terms of the kinds of partnerships that we find ourselves engaged with. Um, this is a, just a, a, a quick list that we pulled together. This is not a comprehensive list of all of our partnerships, but it gives you a sense of the kinds of companies and external partners who seek to work with Parsons precisely because of this notion about a relevant education, an education that is focused on the kinds of challenges uh, that they are seeing and facing in their own um, areas, whether those are businesses, uh, corporations, not-for-profits, municipalities, and so forth. We also do a great deal of work um, beyond the programs in what we call research labs. Uh, there are over 20 research labs uh, here at Parsons and across the New School. And these are opportunities to continue to go deeper into particular subject areas or different approaches to um, the kind of work that our faculty are engaged with. And there are a lot of opportunities for our graduate students to participate in this work. Um, they're, they're led by team-based um, uh, and um, really creative scholars who know how to work um, in these kinds of collaborative and interdisciplinary ways that I was talking about. Uh, and um, they provide access to fellowships. Um, we have incubators and accelerator programs as well uh, through eLab and XRC, as well as um, opportunities uh, to work um, in some of these particular centers. And I, this is a, a really kind of critical part of the research scholarship and creative practice that goes on here at Parsons and at the New School. And so I wanna take just a couple minutes to look at maybe two of these with you, um, a little bit more in depth to talk about the kind of work they do. Again, as an example of, what, uh, of how many different uh, opportunities there are. For those of you that might have come to our graduate open house uh, here, you would have heard Allison Mears, who is the uh, director of the Healthy Materials Lab speak about that work. Um, this is a, a really fascinating um, body of work that is now in its fourth year. It's a, it's a, a six-year, um, $15 million funded research lab that is focusing on human health and building materials, which is a very simple concept, um, but it actually is quite radical if you think about it. We, we know a great deal about, or at least we have regulation that provides us the kind of information about the food that we eat. Sorry, Phil, I didn't mean to touch my microphone. Um, the food that we eat, but we don't have the same kind of um, uh, community-wide or society-wide data or information about the buildings in which we live and the health implications of the materials that are um, creating those environments. And so the Healthy Materials Lab was set up precisely um, to do the kind of work that looks at how do you identify toxins in the built environment and how do you um, uh, look for uh, alternatives to those toxins so that architects and, um, and designers uh, and leaders of municipal um, agencies can help to start to build healthier uh, environments. One of the places where the Healthy Materials Lab is focused um, is in the space of uh, affordable housing. The uh, Healthy Affordable Materials Project uh, was something that um, sits within the lab and it takes that same principle of healthy materials and applies it to the affordable housing context. Uh, and the uh, team from HML was working with NYCHA, the New York City Housing Authority, to look at paint alternatives um, in childcare centers in public housing projects as one example of the kind of work that they do to put it out into the world and to provide specification and data um, to be making smarter choices uh, in those spaces. So that gives you an idea of what can happen inside of Parsons. There are five different programs and two different schools involved in the Healthy Materials Lab. But when you step back and you look at um, the university as a whole and you think about the opportunities that I was mentioning further, and I, I really want to highlight this point, what differentiates a Parsons education is precisely the fact that we sit inside of this comprehensive university. That there is so much about design and innovation and business and art that is at the core of what we do. And as I said earlier, that that is at the core of relevance uh, to solving intersectional problems the way that Dewey suggested we should. 
um, but to do so inside of a university. To be in a design school, an art school, inside of a university provides you with a set of opportunities um, that are quite unique, uh, I think, in design education. And so we have programs uh, in all of those uh, areas. Sorry, I'm just going to show you that one more time because it may have been up, but I missed it. There they are. Whoops. So the, the university, whatever, <laughs> has programs in all of those areas that went by very quickly. And they are organized into their own um, creative practice zones, their own kinds of affinity groups. And the interesting work is what you can do across that space. And so one of the other labs that I wanted to talk to you about um, is the Designed Realities Lab. The Designed Realities Lab, which was run, is run by uh, Tony Dunn and Fiona Raby, is um, focused on the kind of work uh, that occurs at the intersection of going from problem-solution kind of framework to a more speculative engagement with the kinds of challenges that we face today. The work in the Designed Realities Lab, which comes out of a university transdisciplinary lab space that is led by different faculty in any given year. The notion of what can be taught there and what can be asked about and what can be explored in precisely this sort of um, speculative realm is intended to push students to go beyond uh, um, traditional solutions, to look at truly speculative environments in which you can rethink the basic assumptions that we make about systems and organization and strategy. And so um, the nature of this work is intended to push a boundary. In this case, what you see here is work that was um, in that, from that first lab, this micronations project, which was challenging the nation, nation state as a framework in relationship to the kinds of environmental and social and technological issues that present to us today around artificial intelligence and climate change um, and migration, to be, for, an, for example. And so you had students uh, from a range of different programs. Um, in Parsons, we had students uh, from industrial design, design studies, transdisciplinary design, design and technology, communication design, all participating in this, as well as from the social sciences and psychology uh, and anthropology and um, sociology. And they were looking at different ways of thinking about the notion of the nation. So those are just a couple of examples of the way these labs work, the way it integrates with your curriculum, the way it touches on the kind of um, research opportunities you will have. Many of our students end up through, these, through research ending up doing um, uh, teaching uh, assistantships or research assistantships with faculty as well as working in the labs. Um, but all of that takes place in space, in some context. Uh, obviously in New York City, which is a great um, framework for this work, and the New School, as I've mentioned, overall. Um, but the kinds of facilities and, and spaces in which you work are also critical. What you're seeing here um, is our 16th Street graduate um, hub, uh, the List Center, um, where many of the graduate programs of the university are located, not all of them. Um, but this is a place for kind of a cross-disciplinary gathering um, throughout <coughs> the graduate programs. Um, this also occurs through our making facilities. What you're seeing here is a picture of um, one of the floors of the most recently created 35,000 square foot making center, um, which brings together students from the entire university into a creative um, and collaborative working space. Uh, focused on a range of different uh, materials. This is a part of about 75,000 square feet of making facilities here uh, at Parsons, um, some of which are very specific to particular kinds of disciplines um, and others which are really at the hybrid intersection. So you'll have, for example, here um, a range of different technologies from 3D knitting uh, to 3D printing, wood and metal, um, you have print, uh, ceramics, uh, photography, um, all gathered together in places that are intended to draw students from different areas into a working relationship with each other. There are um, 40 staff and about 150 student technicians who work uh, in these spaces uh, as part of the making facility. Um, 
you can see here um, some of those uh, um, spaces uh, and um, technologies in action. Um, and as I mentioned um, before, um, the goal for us is to make it possible for you to find yourself if you're in, a, say, a, one of our fashion programs or in our strategic design and management program um, or in one of our industrial programs, find yourself working together with colleagues in that way and by the end of the day, new ideas and new innovations um, and new businesses themselves have emerged. Beyond the capabilities of the Making Center, um, we have a range of different um, uh, opportunities uh, in our galleries. Um, we have about 4,000 square feet of gallery space here at Parsons. Uh, right now, we have a virtual reality exhibition in the Kellen Galleries that I really strongly encourage you to take some time um, and walk through. Um, the galleries on Fifth Avenue, the Aronson Galleries, uh, facing uh, Fifth Avenue rotate more quickly and are a place where we often will show faculty or student work over the course of any given year. Um, and in the case of the Kellen Galleries, we're often co-curating those larger shows or they may be visiting shows. And then at the end of the year, we take over the entire space as part of our festival in order to bring together work from graduating uh, students um, across Parsons. Uh, and um, I strongly uh, encourage you to take part in that. Um, we are actively engaged in um, work both on our campus and around the city. Um, one of our favorite interventions is Street Seats um, here on 13th Street that comes as part of our School of Constructed Environments and uh, is a, a place where we take over a portion of a parking lane, a uh, parking spot, and turn it into um, a park. Uh, for um, this community during the summer months. Uh, so I strongly encourage you to please participate. There are lots of come back after in the, in the springtime, those of you who are local or coming through New York City, uh, May 1st to May 20th is our festival, um, and you'll have an opportunity to see symposia and work and take part in events. Um, that gives you a real sense of the excitement and the caliber and the nature of the work that goes on here in our studios and in our uh, classrooms. Um, <clears throat> lastly, and uh, I've always liked this one as a way of ending, um, it was a, a production of the design and technology students from, uh, I don't know, about four years ago, I'm looking at John, when they were um, at graduation essentially saying goodbye to or hello to, I'm not sure, it's a kind of digital archive of welcoming classes that would come after them and saying goodbye to them at the same moment, um, but it was part of their um, departure at graduation, and I always think it's a nice way to just get a sense of who are the people and the students who make up this place. The energy around Parsons is palpable. It's an extraordinary environment to be in, and the work that you will do is the kind of work relevant to changing the world for the better through design, through innovation and strategy, through your artwork and your communication. Um, it's an extraordinary place to be, so I'm just, through, I kind of stopped doing that part of it. That's when I grab my heart. Um, I'm really, really pleased to welcome you. Uh, I hope to see you around um, the campus. I congratulate you on admissions, and I'm going to give it to Simone to give you a little bit more detail about what will happen for the rest of the day. So congratulations, everyone. Well, now that uh, Joel has all of us excited about this upcoming semester, and I know he's got me thinking about potentially taking some courses this semester. Um, I'd like to take a few moments to go over some next steps. First things first, if you, uh, in order to join us this fall, you'll uh, be required to submit your non-refundable enrollment deposit through your My New School portal, if you haven't done this yet. The first time you log in, you'll be prompted to select look up your net ID to gain access. You'll be asked to provide your student ID number, which is right in your acceptance letter, along with your last name. And you'll want to ensure to include your last name exactly the way that you spelled it in your application. Uh, you'll be given a net ID, which will then, uh, you'll use that to access your My New School portal. Once you log in to my.newschool, you'll see a link to pay your tuition deposit. And by clicking this link, you'll be redirected to TouchNet, which is our secure payment system. 
And remember to click the button for deposits. You don't want to select make a payment. Um, just ensure to select deposits and submit the $500 enrollment deposit. You'll receive confirmation of your deposit once it's submitted, um, and you'll receive follow-up email from our office um, with next steps about how to proceed to set up your new school email account. It'll be important that you check that account regularly because it will be our primary way of reaching you um, from here on out. If you have questions about financial aid and funding your education, please uh, don't hesitate to attend one of our information sessions later this afternoon. Representatives from the Office of uh, Financial Services will be available to answer your question. Um, and uh, myself and my colleague Phil, who are, uh, who's also running around today, will also be happy to answer any questions that you might have. It'll also be important for you to familiarize yourself with the tuition and fees page. Um, a lot of, uh, there's, with about 20 different programs, there's a few different ways in which programs within Parsons Grad charge tuition, some on a per semester basis, some on a per credit basis, but once you're on that website, you'll be able to figure out how exactly your program charges so that you can determine an accurate number for um, your total cost of attendance. Um, and of course, as a reminder, I'm gonna plug our financial aid information sessions later this afternoon. Um, we will receive a lot of information about how to fund your education. Um, as uh, Joel mentioned earlier, there are opportunities for student employment research assistantships, teaching assistantships, um, and uh, other types of graduate assistantships, and you can find them through the New School's HR website, um, which is careers.newschool.edu. And you'll find on that page a button for students, and that will show you student-specific positions that are available. Of course, as it gets closer to the start of the semester, you'll find that more and more positions are available that will be appropriate for you starting in the fall, um, or for those of you starting in the summer. Right now, it's fewer positions that might be relevant to you, but that's the page you'll go to to see positions as they become available. You might be thinking about housing. I know we have a lot of uh, outer towners in the, in the room, which we're thrilled for. Um, if you are thinking that you'd like to secure on-campus housing, you'll want to keep May 8th in mind, because this is the date to um, have your application in hand, um, along with your $350 on-campus uh, non-refundable housing deposit. And if you get everything in by May 8th, you will be guaranteed on-campus housing. Um, the Office of Housing and Residential Education regularly offers campus tours during the week, um, so we encourage you, if you have the time tomorrow or on another day, to visit their website and to contact them to find out when you might be able to get a campus tour if you'd like to see um, tours specifically of the residential options. Um, and we're happy to connect you with them if, you, if you'd like. If you're thinking about off-campus housing as an option, you'll also find that their website is a terrific resource, um, or you can use the Admitted Student Facebook page, which also has um, resources for students who are looking for off-campus housing in the area. I'd also like to quickly plug the uh, Offices of Student Success and Advising Offices, who will likely be in touch with you starting in June or so to talk about academic advising. Um, your advisor will be assigned to you at that time and will be contacting you via your new school email account and uh, provide registration instructions for your program. Of course, if you're in one of the programs that begins earlier in the summer, there's a few of those, they'll contact you a little bit earlier. Um, but look out for that email for information about course registration. Um, these academic advisors will be available to you throughout your studies uh, at, in your program, so um, be sure to use them as, uh, as resources throughout as you um, develop a personalized path toward your creative innovation. Finally, a few other reminders. Um, students who are not US citizens or permanent residents, um, it'll be important that you apply for an I-20 to obtain a student visa in order to enroll in the US. Um, you will find information about that in your acceptance letter, and you're always welcome to be in touch with the Office of International Students and Scholars for guidance along the way. Um, for all students, international or domestic, Please remember to have your official final transcript sent before you enroll. Um, we'd like those to come over the course of the summer. If you uploaded a document for your application that was just fine for your application review, but now we need you to follow up with your official sealed transcripts. 
Um, we'll also want to make sure that we have your current mailing address on file. So if you are just finishing up your undergraduate education and now you're going to uh, no longer be at that address, be in touch with us if you want to ensure that we have your correct email address or your correct uh, mailing address, rather, on file. Lastly, if you have questions after you leave here today, uh, the Office of Admission is really quite pleased to help. Today doesn't need to be the end of the conversation, so feel free to connect with us. Um, this is an important day in your life as an artist, designer, scholar, and hopefully future Parsons student, and I encourage you to make the most of it, ask lots of questions, uh, get to know our world-class faculty, and learn as much as you can about your program, and fully engage with your future peers. Um, it's time for you to meet each other and your faculty.